Great. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to give you a perspective on the uh, local level because we kind of looked at the national and then took a look at what they were doing in North Carolina. And I wanted to narrow it down to uh, a county. For those of you not familiar with Hennepin County, we're a part of the Twin Cities. Minneapolis is our biggest city. So we have some uh, pretty dense population. And uh, traditionally, we haven't had a lot of uh, landslide experience until recently. Uh, prior to that, it was mostly nuisance slides and some fallen rock. But sometimes it takes a triggering event uh, to bring awareness. And we had two years in a row where we had some significant events. We had children on a field trip in a park killed by a landslide in, in St. Paul. They were from Hennepin County, but they were in neighboring St. Paul. Um, and then in 2014, we had a swarm of landslides, um, including some homes uh, that had to be evacuated and one destroyed uh, or raised, um, condemned and raised. And then we had a federal declaration uh, size incident next to one of our hospitals. <laughs> so uh, what that, that energized a, uh, a group of people, of professionals that were interested in this, and we essentially found each other. There were some people doing independent, uh, separate things, and th this, uh, these two events uh, brought us together. And, and then we reached out to some other experts and uh, formed a group to take a look at this problem. And it seems like a problem that's trending upward in our county. Um, you know, we had another wet spring, and as uh, just minutes before this webinar started, I got a news ticker from a local TV station saying a slide had uh, gone over one of our uh, one of our highways. So I'll be headed out there as soon as we're done with this webinar. So uh, a, a key person uh, that you need if if anybody's considering a local landslide assessment is your emergency manager. And uh, uh, in most counties in the United States, emergency management is a uh, additional duty uh, for someone else's uh, you know who's doing other things at the government level. So you may need to uh, you know, bring them up to speed in awareness of the landslide problem to begin with so that they'll, uh, they'll participate with you. But they are very important because they write the plans and grant proposals for uh, emergencies and disasters. And so they're very key. And they also are charged with bringing all those disparate elements of uh, the community together to work on um, hazard mitigation. So it's an essential role that um, is really resides at the local level. And every level is important, but the local level is particularly important because again, that's where um, these plans are written for emergency response and emergency recovery. And so uh, uh, those responders need to be energized and understand where their capabilities are and where their gaps are and how to prepare for landslides that could be uh, life-threatening and where folks that operate critical infrastructure understand where their facilities uh, might be in a uh, hazard area and those type of things. So it's very important, that, that local aspect. So emergency management, don't think of it as a department, think of it as a system. And this system goes through the entire life cycle of a disaster from prevention when that's possible to mitigation and reducing the, the hazard to preparation of the responders in public to the response actions and then to the recovery to put it all back together. And again, it's the synchronization of all these different elements in a community that come together to address these problems. It's what we call whole community. So this is the framework and system that is in effect all across the United States. So if you talk to a, uh, an emergency manager, this is the system that we'll, they'll be using. And in particular, when we're talking about an assessment, that's part of mitigation. So in, in uh, the mitigation framework, threats and hazards identification is a core part of that. And so you want to uh, identify a hazard's frequency and magnitude, which is what you'll be doing with a landslide assessment, and then incorporate that assessment into the planning processes. So as you write your emergency operations plans and your mitigation plans, they specifically address the community's needs. And then the national mitigation framework also mentions that um, you should anticipate impacts of climate change, which is what we're kind of seeing up here in Minnesota. A really important document that we use, and unfortunately didn't get a lot of uh, press when it came out because it came out just a month before uh, Katrina and Rita happened in 2005, is these uh, as this grand challenges for disaster reduction. But it really informs uh, really well what we have been trying to do here in Hennepin County. 
Uh, the first is providing hazard and disaster information where and when it's needed, which is essentially we install the real-time monitoring situation or stations uh, that provide us real-time situational awareness in a number of different um, aspects of hazards. And then also understand the processes that produce the hazards. That's like this landslide assessment. And then look at risk-wise behavior and then develop those mitigation strategies and technologies. So these are the sensor networks that we have here. Um, we've established uh, many uh, mesonet sites and they have an enhanced capability, for example, with soils. So we can measure soil temperature, soil moisture, pore density, and frost depth pro profiles um, through using through the use of these stations. Um, they're located uh, in a real dense network across our county and around our county, and other partners are joining. But uh, this helps us. But it's also important to note that we don't have specific instrumentation set up on slopes at this point in time. We haven't identified any particular slopes um, that we wanted to do that. So this is a general system just to talk about conditions. Here's the group that ended up forming, um, and it compri is comprised of federal, state, and local uh, people that came together and uh, either contributed resources or staff time or uh, or data to this effort, and uh, it's been pretty effective. The first thing that we did was uh, get some geology students from University of Minnesota to take a look at uh, the historical archives and the data to try to see what has gone on in the past that was large enough to um, uh, to make the papers. And so there are 51 documented cases of landslides and mudslides found in this search. Uh, that was produced with a Department of Natural Resource document uh, of a historic inventory for the Twin Cities. Uh, then with some uh, weather personnel from the National Weather Service and the State Climate Office, we uh, correlated those slides in the news uh, reports to uh, you know the decades and the and the wet and dry periods. You saw during the Dust Bowl we didn't have very many or any landslides, and then we had certain wet periods where we had quite a few, and then we came up with essentially a landslide season, um, which is April through September here, not including falls and topples, which are freeze thaw dominated. But this is very helpful for emergency planning, and then when we had uh, large swarms of uh, landslides that uh, we knew about, we could also correlate the conditions for rainfall preceding those events. So this was the Minneapolis slide. Then after the historical uh, research was done, then a LIDAR assessment was done. And this was able to identify over 1,200 landslides with our, our geologist, Kerry Jennings, um, worked on this. and. Uh, came up with three different styles of landslides. One is in the Mississippi River Gorge, which is falls and topples mostly. And then we had the Miss, uh, Minnesota River Valley, which is more deep seated landslides. And then the glacial deposits that are scattered throughout the, uh, the county are really more small, shallow landslides, but they're definitely three different types of, uh, or styles of landslides. So this fundamental challenge we have to take this information and convert it into something that decision makers and landowners can use is uh, this risk-wise behavior. And so once we uh, produce a landslide atlas that uh, kind of has things similar to the way Gen Jennifer described in North Carolina, we'll be able to uh, produce and make available to the public and to cities um, this more detailed assessment. Because when, when we decide that things are foreseeable and even preventable, we can begin to get inside that um, decision cycle and, and uh, help reduce the, um, the costs from landslides. Uh, we really learned that the county levels, in, at least in Minnesota, the way our government is set up, the county level seems to be a really good level to do landslide assessments because uh, uh, we're one step above the land use planning and zoning and uh, ordinances and codes and the, the political tensions that that can bring and keeping it in an emergency management context uh, where we talk about life safety and critical infrastructure sometimes can um, put you in a different place than uh, simple zoning and planning discussions. And so we're able to do this and then hand this uh, data out to the, to the cities um, for their use and to the landowner. So we funded this uh, through 
a mixture of general funds um, when we were hiring um, uh, the geologic consultants to do this uh, through funds with Hennepin County Emergency Management and our regional rail authority that had some trails uh, that used old railroad grades and then water uh, shed districts. And then also a lot of in-kind assistance um, from the agencies that were participating. We didn't really use federal funds for this effort in Hennepin County. And this produced a spin-off benefit um, at the state level, seeing what we were doing in Hennepin. Um, an appeal was made to the legislature and um, similar assessments are taking place in certain areas of the state now using um, a state fund called the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund. If you do have a landslide disaster, there are several different ways that uh, or funds that can be used to try to uh, remediate that. Um, among those, probably the most predominant is the Presidential Disaster Declaration and using the Stafford Act. Um, there is a landslide and slope failure policy that I would encourage everyone to look at. And one of the aspects of this that makes landslides difficult is uh, they, they don't want to approve pre-existing conditions. And so, as you know, with the landslide, that's typically uh, terrain that is a pre-existing condition. And so uh, there's a lot of discussion about what's pre-existing and what isn't and how that works. So it's, there's a lot of nuances there. So you should look at that landslide and slope failure policy. There's also emergency water protection uh, funds from the NRCS and emergency relief for federal aid highways as well. And likewise, they have um, restrictions against what they would call pre-existing conditions, which is another reason why these assessments are so important because we need to tell people because landslides are often not insurable and pre-existing uh, pre conditions are denied with federal relief oftentimes that it's good to know this ahead of time and be able to take measures on your own and, and do some mitigation efforts so that you don't find yourself um, trying to recover from a slide. Um, the pre -act, pre -act, or proactive approach is to go after mitigation funds through the hazard mitigation grant program or pre-disaster mitigation program. Um, and in order to go after these types of funds, you have to be part of that emergency manager's hazard mitigation plan for the jurisdiction. And so that's why another reason why it's so important to tie into your local emergency manager so that you can um, have this effort be eligible for these uh, uh, mitigation funds. And so uh, the state is the primary applicant, local jurisdictions are sub applicants, but you want to get inside those uh, grant programs. And that is all I have pending your questions. 